Yo, what's up? This week on The Blessing Show, we're doing things a little bit differently because we're diving into dreams. Oh my God. I can get used to this. Welcome to The Blessing Show, where I break down what's up. So let's talk about what's up with Media Molecule's dreams. It's been a little bit over a year since the full release of Dreams on PlayStation, and while talk around the game hasn't been as loud, Dreams is quietly existing as one of the cooler first party games on the platform. That's because since the launch of Dreams, the game slash creation tool has been nurturing a community filled with creative folks looking to make video games, movies, music, or whatever this is. My first time playing Dreams was during its original early access launch, and while I was never able to get into the creation aspect of it, I did enjoy dream surfing and playing the wealth of early user generated content. Many of those early dreams were rough around the edges, but it was fun seeing creators put themselves out there and let their imaginations run wild. That said, it was evident during the early access period that Dreams would only thrive by having a committed user base over a long period of time. That's because Dreams is not a traditional PlayStation game, it's a platform that houses is user generated content. So without content, it's pretty much dead on arrival. Many dreams during the early access launch were work in progress creations or fan remakes of other games which made some headlines. But for dreams to be successful, it would need to come with the promise of fully realized content down the road. It's been a couple of years now since early access and a year since full release, and I'm happy to report that dreams is amazing. The platform is filled with incredible experiences ranging from cool platformers, walking sims, puzzle games, sci-fi stories, Sonic the Hedgehog talk fan games and a lot more. I want to tell you about five dreams that I currently love. Before you click off, I know what you're thinking. Dreams games, aren't they all clunky with the same fuzzy art style? Trust me, I'm going to make to you the promise that in this video, I'm going to blow your mind with some of the things that people are making in dreams. So let's get started. Lock is a first person puzzle game by Pixel Gorilla. The easy way to break this one down would be to say that it's like The Witness, but with words. And while that simplified premise gets the point across, in execution, Lock is so much more. You'll go room to room trying to solve puzzles to unlock panels. Each panel is unlocked by inputting a four letter word, and these words are uncovered by finding hidden clues in the environment. The clues range from illusions that play with the perspective of how you view the room you're in, to straight up decrypting messages based on steganography. Languages such as Braille, Morse code, flag semaphore, and others come into play. For example, in the kitchen area of the game, you are tasked with figuring out the four letters to unlock its panel. By sifting around, you'll eventually discover that if you turn on the sink, water flows in an unusual pattern resembling what could be Morse code. So you'll have to transcribe that letter. On the wall facing the sink, you'll find a clock where the shorthand and longhand resemble flag semaphore. Guess what you'll have to do? As I played Lock, I didn't just feel like I was solving puzzles, I felt like I was learning languages. Lock is easily one of the most memorable dreams that I've played. Metal Eagle's Ultimate Challenge is a game by Paulo Lameris. It's a top-down shoot-em-up inspired by the arcade classics of the 80s and 90s. With beautifully crafted pixel art, quick and satisfying gunplay, and bass-heavy synth playing over it all, it does that inspiration justice. I was blown away when I first booted this one up because its pixel art style, gameplay, and presentation are so good that if you didn't tell me it was a dreams game, I wouldn't have known. It has all the energy, difficulty, and quality of those 90s arcade classics, and the gameplay backs it up. You'll fight waves of enemies progressively filling the screen more and more with gunfire, but as they get more aggressive, you'll pick up power-ups to improve your weapons and mow them down. Metal Eagles feels like a trip back in time and for a laid back arcade experience, it's a fun way to spend an afternoon. Tectonic is a driving game by Sandero Bros and S. Doran. The twist in Tectonic is that it's packed with three game modes that are each made to feel high speed and action packed. In its action mode, you spend two laps trying to get the fastest time possible, but halfway through, an earthquake hits that shifts the landscape you're driving on. This turns a regular time attack mode into an action movie like set piece moment that I ended up playing multiple times because it was that enjoyable. In the bomb mode, you only have a few seconds to hit each checkpoint, otherwise, your vehicle explodes. This is a another one that I spent way too much time on, not only because it was a fun way to play, but because driving in Tectonic feels great. There is a weightiness to your car that you don't normally get in user-created driving games, and an emphasis on drifting that invokes a bit of burnout. It's good fun with slick menus and unlockable car skins that really make it feel like a well-realized experience.
A Little Perspective by RBD Jellyfish is another one of those games that I wouldn't have been able to tell you was made in dreams. It's a block puzzle game that deals entirely with perspective. You'll guide the red block to the green space to beat each level, but in order to get there, you'll have to shift your viewing angle to one of four planes to line up spaces for your block to move across. It's a somewhat mind-blowing concept that is executed beautifully. The game starts off simple, but as you progress through, more advanced ideas and mechanics are introduced, making this a puzzle game that pushed me to my limits at points. It's a lovely game that feels as premium as anything else you find on the PlayStation Store. Blade Gunner by Jimmy Jules 153 is Resogun. I can't be around the bush on this one, but that's also why I'm excited to tell you about it. You fly your ship around a looping cylinder, taking out endless waves of enemies. You gain power-ups like bombs, hyperdrive, and shield to increase your chances of survival. It's all very Resogun, but Blade Gunner absolutely nails its look and feel. It doesn't go for the voxel aesthetic, instead it has its own cool art style, keeping a flat pixel art look for the player ship while everything else is modeled differently. Also space in the background juxtaposed with the play area makes for a really cool arcade sci-fi look. Blade Gunner is another example of not only the different types of creations that people are making in dreams, but the quality of them. It's a game that I came across while browsing the dream surfing homepage, and while you might expect that Blade Gunner is a hidden gem amongst a sea of nebulous user created nonsense, it's really not. The dreams that people are creating are only getting bigger and better. Each time I've surfed through dreams over the last few months, I've been introduced to something cool and exciting. Through my own surfing on dreams and talking to members of the community like Team Pig Detective who graciously worked on this video, links to the work are in the description by the way. The sentiment is shared that dreams as a game, platform, and community is growing and improving constantly. Media Molecule is finding better ways to curate the experience for folks who just want to play games. Creators on the platform are mastering the tools, more collaboration is happening between users as they familiarize with each other's work, and all of this is being reflected in the actual game. But that's the thing, all of the games I talked about today are experiences that would work even outside of dreams, games that I could recommend even paying for. And for many, this is their first foray into game design. Dreams has given these creators a canvas to create their art, and without the accessibility of dreams, these creators wouldn't be able to express themselves to this degree. I want to see this game grow and evolve, and with it, a new generation of game developers visual artists, musicians, character modelers, voice actors, animators, and more continue to rise up. If you look closely, that's already beginning to happen, and it's evident by the abundance of cool dreams currently on the platform. So whether you're a creator looking to make your next unique project, or a player seeking out a fun new game to play, if you haven't given dreams a chance yet, now might be a good time to check it out. Yo, what's up? It's me in real life with a different outfit and a clean shave. Don't question it. This has been episode eight of The Blessing Show, meaning that it is the finale of this run of The Blessing Show. So thank you guys so much for the love and support. Both me and Roger have been very blown away by the kind words and the kind comments. And so again, thank you guys so much. Let us know if this is something you'd like to continue to see, if you'd like to continue to see these types of videos on Kind of Funny. Until next time, I've been blessing. Roger, drop a fun comment right here for people to read and laugh at. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.